Okay, this video is the first in the series that describes how to calculate uh, a delta H of reaction um, using bond energies. Um, now, this topic usually appears in the chapter in uh, university level uh, general chem course that uh, refers to uh, bonding. As a teacher, I usually don't teach this section until I've taught thermochemistry um, so that the student has a solid understanding of what delta H is. So in my course, I usually will teach enthalpy and how to keep and how to calculate delta H naught of uh, reaction, and then I'll come back and deal with the section on on the bond energies at that point uh, in order that the whole idea of the delta H makes sense. So um, calculating delta H of reaction using bond energies and calculating calculating delta H of reaction util, utilizing delta H knots of formations um, operate uh, similarly except in the case of the bond ener energies what we're going to do is use the actual bond energy for the types of bonds that appear in each of the molecules. We're going to sum those together uh, in order to get the delta H of reaction now the way this works, I think I'm going to write it, I'll put it over here. Um, the delta H of reaction with bond energies is going to equal the sum of the bond energies uh, broken. So bonds broken um, minus the sum of the bonds that are formed. Now, you'll notice this equation works different than the one that we use for uh, delta H naught of reaction um, using formations. In that case, it's the sum of the delta H naughts of formation of the products minus the sum of the delta H naughts of formation of the uh, reactants. All right, so the two equations are different. When you look at the equation for um, delta H sum uh, calculated using bond energies, uh, you can see the differences is that we're adding the energy uh, of bonds broken uh, essentially to neg negative one times the, uh, the sum of the bonds formed. And the reason for this is that when we break bonds, all right, that takes an input of energy. So in order to break bonds, this is an endothermic process. And then when the atoms are rearranged and the, the, the products are formed, so we break the bonds of the reactants, rearrange the atoms, and then reform the bonds to make the products, that process is exo because energy is always released in the process of uh, forming a bond. So what I have at the bottom of the screen is the bond energy for the different bonds that are involved in the reaction that I have at the top of the screen here. Now, when you're going to calculate a delta H of reaction using bond energies, the first thing you should do is draw the Lewis formula of each of the components that's involved in the reaction. And the reason you should do this is so you can identify the types of bonds that are in the molecules. All right, um, because otherwise, how are you going to figure out which bond energies you're dealing with? So this this would be the bond platform for the oxygen. Here's the one for the hydrogen. Uh, notice that there's two molecules or two moles. So I'll put the two here. And then for the water, I'm going to write the water this way to illustrate the fact that there are two OH bonds in this thing. All right. So I'll put, a, um, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this right now. So it's going to be 2HO like that. And then notice that we've got a coefficient here. All right. And so I'm going to put a parentheses around this and put that 2 right here. So the bottom line is we're going to have four total HOs. All right, so now to calculate the delta H of the reaction using this method, 
we're going to sum the, the, the bond energies for the bonds broken. So that's going to be a 498. I'm going to leave the units out of here, but these are kilojoules per mole of bond. And there's one mole of O. So we're just going to have 498. And then this is going to be plus. We have 2 times 436 for the H's. All right, and then this is going to be minus 4 times 464 for the HO bonds. All right, where the grand total for this is going to be a minus 486 kilojoules. All right, now for comparison, what I want to do is also include here a calculation of uh, delta H naught of reaction using delta H naughts of formation so we can compare these two values. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the delta H naught of formations above the components in this reaction so we can see what the numbers are. Remember for an element in its lowest energy most natural form it's going to be zero. So I'll put that in for the O2 and the H2. And then for the water, the, the value per mole is going to be minus 241.8. Uh, and the units are in kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole. So again, when we do the calculation, in this case, the sum is going to be the sum of the delta H naughts of products minus the sum of delta H naughts of formations for the reactants. So the products are going to be um, 2 times minus 241.8 and then this is going to be minus the sum of the values for the reactants. In this case they're zero. So the the value that we get is going to be minus 483 kilojoules. Okay, now, notice the similarity in the values. They differ very little. So the main point is that if for a chemical reaction we know the bond energies of the various molecules that are involved in that reaction, we can calculate a delta H of reaction which based on empirical, well I shouldn't say empirical, based, based on calculations is going to be very similar to what the delta H naught of reaction would be if we calculated it by formation. So the main point is, is that if you know bond energies for, for the components that are in a balanced chemical equation, you can calculate a delta H of reaction that can be used to approximate the delta H naught of reaction.